Good afternoon, and welcome to Immaculate Conception Church. Please mute all mobile devices. Today we celebrate Mass for the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and this Mass is being said in memory of Marion and Leo Baccio. Please stand. Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is great to be with you this evening. Uh, it's a bit cool or crisp outdoors, but nice and warm here in our church, this wonderful place in which we give thanks to God for his love, his presence, his guidance, and strength. I uh, just want to offer a special word of welcome to the Blake family who are here with us. Uh, no strangers to the Immaculate Conception family. Um, we have one of our little sisters in Christ, not too little, she's ever-growing. Emma will be receiving her first communion at Mass this evening. Uh, she had done a preparation at another church, and because of the current pandemic situation, they wouldn't have first communion until the spring. And so, just like Dad and Grandma and others within the family, she'll be receiving her first communion here at Immaculate Conception. So, again, I'm sorry it didn't work out at your other church, Emma, but so thrilled to have this opportunity to celebrate with you, with your parents, your siblings, and others who are here with you to support you. So in anticipation of later on in Mass, congratulations. Uh, and for all of us, how about this on this day? We're returning to Mass, or to, <laughs> I've done this before, we're returning to communion within Mass, as opposed to we've been doing communion after Mass to be within the Mass. So a very special day indeed. So we give thanks to God for his goodness and his mercy. At the beginning of this Mass, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us of our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, as our Good Shepherd, you are continually interceding for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Together we say, glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, 
Pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest wine vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed it out of a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now, I will let you know what I need to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thrones and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see, bloodshed, for justice, but mark, the outcry, the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, 
Make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, thinking, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, The kingdom of God will be taken away from you, and given to a people that will produce its fruits. The Gospel of the Lord. In the last several weeks, we've heard different parables that Jesus was sharing in regards to different vineyards. Uh, we heard not too long ago about those servants who went out into the vineyard, and some worked all day, and others worked just for an hour, and they all received the same wages. Uh, and then we heard in that first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah that Jim proclaimed about that vineyard there, which was representative of the people of Israel. And then within the gospel, we hear there another parable, uh, Jesus speaking about the kingdom of God about another vineyard. And so this image of the vineyard was very significant uh, within sacred scripture, something which Jesus himself also spoke about with his friends, the disciples. Uh, you may recall from chapter 15 of John's gospel, uh, in the context of the Last Supper, he was talking about, I am the vine and you are the branches. And so he used that image again of the vine producing the grapes that would then produce the wine, uh, which was symbolic of God's grace and mercy at work within the world. Uh, whenever I think of that particular passage, uh, maybe it's just my very 
poor sense of humor, but I always hear, I am divine and you are to humans. I don't know, maybe you think of that too, and maybe from now on you will. Maybe it won't, but it's forever immortalized here with our wonderful technology, so uh, right back at you. All right, well, uh, on that note, though, just the idea of, again, uh, within the gospel, we heard there about those tenants who were caring for this vineyard. The owner of the vineyard, representative of God, had entrusted those leaders with the vineyard. And then he sent forth those servants, representative of the prophets of the Old Testament, sent forth, and the religious leaders of the day, they rejected that message. And so, uh, ultimately, uh, the vine grower there uh, was going to take the uh, servants, those tenants, those who were there caring for it, and give it to another. So for ourselves, in that spiritual sense, uh, how resistant are we to hearing God's good news? How are we resisting within the depths of our hearts of receiving that saving message, God's mess message of mercy and truth for us that we can then share with others, with our family, with our friends, with the greater society, to make the world a more just, merciful, and loving place? Something for us to prayerfully ponder, that God would continually tend the vineyard of our own hearts and souls, and that he who is the vine grower, uh, ultimately we would stay connected to him, and that one day after our time here on earth, we would be there in that heavenly vineyard to glorify the Lord forever and ever. Amen. As one body of believers, one family in Christ, let us together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We turn out to God, our Heavenly Father, with our heartfelt prayers and petitions, our intercessions this evening. For the Church of God, that the beloved vineyard may produce its fruits for his glory, we pray to the Lord. For world leaders, that they may follow what is true, honorable, just, and worthy of praise, especially in the area of human life and dignity, we pray to the Lord. For those in search of effective treatments and vaccines for COVID-19, that their efforts may be swiftly rewarded, we pray to the Lord that by opening our wounds to Jesus, including those inflicted by people in the church community, we, like St. Luke the physician, may be agents of God healing through our synod. We pray to the Lord. For our Immaculate Conception Church family, that this Eucharist may be a sign and pledge of the harvest God expects in each of us. We pray to the Lord. For those who are ill, all those suffering from COVID-19 and their families, all those in our prayer chain and in our books of intention, may they be touched by the healing power of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially Neil Noel, those who have succumbed to COVID-19, our loved ones, and all who have died as a result of violence. May they rejoice with the Lord in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, our human family is hurting. We know that with the grace and mercy of your Son, Jesus, we can help to build a world that is more just, more loving, more merciful. Send forth your Holy Spirit to heal us and strengthen us in this vineyard 
and with your grace we would continually build up your kingdom and one day join you in your heavenly kingdom where you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, so the Lord Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you have loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim you. By sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was entered, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection 
you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. Peace to you. La paz. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Though many, we are one bread, one body, for we all partake of the one bread and one chalice. The Hades Pizza Sale is underway. Visit the parish website or call the parish office Monday through Friday to order your pizzas 
and support our faith formation programs. Sale ends Monday, October 26th, so order your pizzas early. Thank you. The Council of Catholic Women will lead the rosary all Sundays in October after the Sunday 10 a.m. Mass. If you will be joining us after Mass, we ask that you remain in your seat. The rosary will be prayed from the pulpit. Next weekend, there will be a second collection for the IHM Sisters of Nigeria who will be visiting us. This is in connection with this year's official mission appeal from the Archdiocesan Center for Mission. This Saturday, our students, family, and staff walked, ran, biked, and skated in our annual marathon for non-public education. Please consider sponsoring a student by making a donation with a student decorated envelope which are available in the narthex. Donations may also be made online at our website. Thank you for your ongoing support. Together let us stand and pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Such a great gift and blessing to celebrate this Mass with you this evening. You know, we heard within that first reading the Gospel about that vineyard uh, with the grapes that would produce the wine. Uh, within the Old Testament and New Testament, wine was a, a symbol of God's grace and goodness, His merciful presence. Uh, then, of course, Jesus at the Last Supper also had the bread and the wine, uh, which he then transformed into his body and blood, uh, and then forever instituted that within the Eucharist. All that to say that Emma, for the very first time, has received her first Holy Communion, so maybe an IC congratulations for Emma. <laughs> very exciting for you and your parents and your siblings. Uh, she's the elder of three siblings, so the other two, uh, Someday, God willing, we'll also be sharing in the Lord's banquet with her, uh, but so excited for you. Uh, really whoop it up tonight and in the days to come. Very exciting. Um, on a very different note, um, tomorrow is October 4th. Uh, some of you say, well, Father James, today is October 3rd, so that makes sense. Uh, tomorrow in the calendar of the church is usually the celebration of St. Francis of Assisi, and it's been a custom here to do the blessing of animals or pets out by the Marian Shrine. Um, this year we're not going to have a formal blessing for all of the animals all at once. And so if you'd like to have your particular cat or dog or iguana or parrot or other sort of creature uh, blessed, I'd be happy to do so, but it'd be more on an individual basis. So um, feel free to, to give me a call, send me an email, send up a smoke signal, Morse code, whatever you'd like, and I will do my part to either go to your home or you can bring your pet to the parking lot here and we'll have that blessing. I hope all of you have a very blessed and warm evening, and we'll continue to give thanks to God, and we'll pray for one another. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.